What's up, kinfolk? It's RJ Young. I am not on a step mill. Consider hitting the like and subscribe button because I upload a video every single day. It's always college football related, sports related. We have a good time. Today, I want to talk a little bit about Ohio State versus Minnesota for a number of reasons, not the least of which is it is going to see our first opportunity or is going to be our first opportunity to see C.J. Stroud as the starting quarterback at Ohio State, and he is much talked about for a number of reasons, right? I like saying a number of stuff. It's fun. C.J. Stroud won the starting quarterback job ahead of five-star Kyle McCord, four-star Jack Miller, and if you want to actually include him, five-star Quinn Ewers. I don't. He got to campus like two days after August began. I never expected him to be a factor in this race, and I really don't expect him to be a factor if not for two years, then at least by next year, right? Like at a minimum, it's going to be at least a year, probably two years. But Stroud also is going to be the first Ohio State quarterback to start a game for the Buckeyes without ever having attempted a pass in college. And I think that stat's a little bit overblown. It's just it happened that way. I don't think that Ryan Day actually wanted that to occur. I think he would have loved to get Jack Miller and C.J. Stroud some opportunities to throw some passes last year. But hey, they didn't start their season until November, and they had to hit the ground running and run the table undefeated to get to the national championship game. And that's one of the reasons that I wanted to do this as well, is this is going to be Ohio State's first opportunity to really put down a marker to say, we're going to go back to the college football playoff, and they have the first opportunity of any of the teams that are ranked inside the top 25 to do that. And we'll get to that in just a little bit as I put out my top 25. You can go check that out on the Fox Sports app where you can also watch the number one ranked show where we did a bunch about Nebraska, a bunch about Texas, a bunch about Deion Sanders. But I was writing some stuff down. And I was taking a look at, well, quarterbacks and where they come from. And it occurred to me, and I put this stat out on Twitter, I think like a couple of weeks ago, that four of the top five programs in the country, number one, number two, number three, number four, number five, have a starting quarterback who hails from California. Number one, according to the AP, Bryce Young, Alabama, he's from California, right? Spencer Rattler at Oklahoma, he's from Arizona. DJ Uyunglele at Clemson, he's from California. CJ Stroud, Ohio State, he is from California. And of course, JT Daniels at Georgia, he is from California. And California has six quarterbacks that start for top 25 teams here, but also one of my favorite stats that I uncovered here is that two top 25 quarterbacks not only come from North Carolina, they come from the same town, a town of just 41,000 residents called Indian Trail. That is where Sam Howell, quarterbacks the UNC Tar Heels, is from, and Grayson McCall, who quarterbacks Coastal Carolina. I love that stat. But because we're going to get to see Ohio State and Minnesota play on Thursday, I thought this was a good time to start talking about them earlier. I understand Oklahoma fans want an Oklahoma two-lane preview. We'll get to it a little bit later. But I wanted to start with that. And I also wanted to see what, you know, Minnesota could do to maybe stymie what many people think is the number four team in the country. And I was taking a look at the 247 Sports Talent Composite which I really love, and I think it's a great index for how we can evaluate rosters ahead of games, right? Because I think you can tell a lot about a talent discrepancy. And yes, we have teams that buck the trend, like Coastal Carolina is a top 25 team with a number 98 overall talent composite. So talent composite is comprised of how many five, four, three stars you have on the roster, right? Don't really count two stars and lower because there's no need. And you can really most of the time, create some level of separation between how good this team is versus how team how good another team is. And one of the reasons I think that so many people are all in on Georgia is it is the most talented roster in all of college football this year. They have 19 five-stars on that roster. That's almost twice as many as Clemson or Ohio State, who both have 10, right? But to talk about Ohio State for just a second here, Ohio State has 56 blue chippers among its 85 scholarship players, right? Give or take, depending on how you want to construe some transfers. But 56 is a good number, with 10 of those guys being five stars. So the upper echelon is still very high, and they still far and away exceed the blue chip 
ratio, which was uh, created by Bud Elliott to basically say, you got to have 55% of your roster be four or five stars to have a chance to win a national championship. And that's what we're talking about. Meanwhile, Minnesota ranks 41st in team talent composite with no five stars and just seven four stars. And a good way for folks that don't watch a lot of Big Ten football to put this, or a good way for a lot of people that don't watch Big 12 football to put this, is Minnesota and Oklahoma State are on the same level. And that makes a lot of sense when you take a look at just what they have accomplished in recent years. Like 2011, Oklahoma State's magic year, they're basically an Iowa State win away from playing for a national championship. Minnesota, a couple years ago, had its magic year, right? They're a couple wins away from really not only just being there at the end to try to thump off an Ohio State in a Big Ten championship game, but perhaps playing the college football playoff. They'll have opportunities, right? Because they'll be good with quarterbacks. Tanner Morgan is outstanding. If Spencer Sanders can hold on to the football, Oklahoma State's got a shot. And then at wide receiver, they're usually pretty good. Like Rashad Bateman just went into the NFL. Tyler Vaughn uh, just went into the NFL. We're also thinking about guys like, you know, uh, my man, Braylon Presley is going to be there, but Brennan Presley is there now. You could also take it all the way back to, goodness me, you don't have to take it that far. I mean, I say Justin Blackman, I say James Washington. Chuba Hubbard's All-American 2,000-yard rusher right? And that's before we even talk about just what kind of production they had at the wide receiver position in the last couple of years. So I think Minnesota and Oklahoma State is a good comp here. So imagine if Oklahoma State was going to play against, I don't know, Oklahoma. Probably ends the same way, right? Uh, It's not disrespect, but it is to say this is the challenge that you are facing. Now, Minnesota has, I think, the best returning tailback in the country in Mo Ibrahim coming back. Be sure to pay attention to that dude in the backfield because if he has a 200-yard rushing game, this is going to be a closer game than Ohio State wants. And we're going to have a lot of questions about that front seven for Ohio State. And it's already kind of questionable, right? And I say kind of because the defensive line is a defensive line, right? Zach Harrison, Jack Sawyer is going to get a lot of run. Haskell Garrett's going to anchor the interior. Probably going to see some JT Tui Molau. But also behind them, you got four brand new linebackers that might get some run. Taraji Mitchell is going to have to be one of those guys that steps up and plays big-time football for them. I hope to see, you know, some younger guys on that defense really get some shine. But also, while we're here talking about where people come from, Denzel Burke and Lathan Ransom and Jack Miller are all from Arizona, right? Like, if Arizona ever decided to put a fence up around its programs, like, or around its state, my God, dude, like, It'd be awesome. Like, let me let me go ahead and give you this list that I came up with. Again, just making notes on Twitter. So I, I do my research. I make notes. Some of them I tweet out, right? And this one I thought was good enough that I needed to tell you about it because it's phenomenal just what has come out of Arizona in recent years. Like, I'll just go ahead and say Mark Andrews was an All-American tight end, right, coming out of Arizona. But these are players playing college football today who all come from Arizona. Spencer Rattler, who you know about. Brock Purdy. At Iowa State, quarterback. Texas Tech's quarterback, Tyler Shuck, who was also starting quarterback most of the year for Oregon. Texas running back, B. John Robinson, who is one of the two best tailbacks, I think, in the entire country. Jake Smith, National Gatorade Player of the Year in 2019. He's at USC after transferring from Texas. USC quarterback, Keaton Slovis. Ohio State quarterback, Jack Miller, who I told about. And then Ransom and Burke, who I also told you about. So if you just decided one day you wanted to just recruit the state of Arizona, if I don't know, you were... Arizona or Arizona State, you could probably be pretty doggone good. Oh, it's easier said than done, obviously, because I just mentioned to you the quarterbacks that come out of California, right? Think about this. Spencer Petrus, quarterback's Iowa. He's from California, right? C.J. Stroud, he's from California. Uwe Ungale, J.T. Daniels, they're from California. <laughs> Jaden Daniels at Arizona State, he's from California, right? They're putting out players. so it's. But California's also got a bunch of schools, which is another reason why it's kind of Difficult to see why a Cal, a Stanford, a SC, a UCLA, right, just aren't ruining that. And then you got Mario Cristobal who keeps coming down into Southern California to get whatever it is he wants. Uh, Shout out Johnny Johnson there, right, among others, Kayvon Thibodeau, right. I can keep going. But that was the point. So when you look at what Ohio State has just on the roster versus what Minnesota has just on the roster, you can see there's a discrepancy. There's, There's a tremendous gap there. Like Ohio State's like fourth. And Minnesota is like 41st when we're talking about talent. And you can see why there's so many people that are on the Ohio State bandwagon. But if C.J. Stroud comes out here and goes for, I don't know, 
25 of 32 for 327 with three TDs and like 60 on the ground with another TD, you're going to put all of this to bed about whether or not they're experienced enough on that offense because he's got the best wide receiver core north of the Mason Dixon line for sure, right? And the only one that I think could challenge it is Oklahoma's full stop, right? That's what they got. And then you have an outstanding offensive line. you got outstanding backfield. Again, it's about the defense for them. And whether or not Minnesota can mount an attack that might lead us to believe, yeah, they're going to be in this thing for the long haul down the Big Ten West. But the Big Ten West is also loaded. Like, I say it's loaded. It's not as loaded as the East. But take into account, Minnesota is unranked. And I still think that's a very solid football team, right? They're very good. Wisconsin is there, right? (laughs) Iowa is there. Nebraska locks to Illinois. That's about the worst I could say. I think Purdue is going to demonstrate that they're there, right? It's going to be a tougher division, and it's going to it's going to sharpen whoever comes out of the Big Ten West. Right now, Illinois might be that team. We'll see. I mean, Illinois has got to enjoy these next few days of being number one in the Big Ten West standings because I don't know that that's going to hold for a very long time. But also, one last thing I kind of wanted to discuss as we talk about Ohio State, Minnesota, and, uh, well, Nebraska. And I put this in our number one ranked show in the reaction recap of the Saturday show. There are four teams, the four, or I should, let me go at this another way. The four winningest teams in college football since integration, about 1971, include Alabama at the top, 495, Ohio State is second with like 490, Oklahoma's third with like 482, and then Nebraska's fourth with like 471. It goes to show you just what Tom Osborne was doing from 1973 to about 1997, but also just how far Nebraska's fallen off because we have not talked about Nebraska being a top five program in, what, 15 years, right? If that longer, it's it's really it's a really sad state of affairs because I like Nebraska when they're good. I was used to, I, I'm old enough to remember Nebraska was really good. Like when I was 10, Scott Frost let him do a national championship. That's just how good they were. And now that's just not what it is, and that's just not what it's going to be unless something drastic changes. And um, I think I speak for most college football fans when I say we like Nebraska good, right? Everybody wants to beat Nebraska when they're playing them, but you like to see Nebraska being pretty good. And whatever's got to happen for that to occur, let's get back to it. But I asked on Twitter, what do you think it's going to take to fix Nebraska football? And I got a number of really funny uh, answers here. But the one that I liked the most came from uh, Suter Gridiron, who said, a flux capacitor. I love that, right? (laughs) What's going to take? A flux capacitor. (laughs) This is pretty good. I have more to say as we get closer to uh, the games and whatnot. And, of course, we will react to them on Saturday for Sunday. So I'm going to be watching all the games with you, tweeting about them. Follow me on Twitter at rj underscore young if you don't already i'm on instagram at rj young show feel free to yell at me about my rankings and whatnot which oh yeah i said i was gonna give so let's give those rankings right quick okay week zero top 25 number one oklahoma you can say what you want to about it i get it i ask ou fans whether or not they think i'm an ou fan but i do think oklahoma is the number one team in the country and that's not far off from the ap right they they have them number two georgia at two Ohio State at three, Bama four, Clemson five, Iowa State six, SC seven, LSU eight, Indiana nine, Oregon 10, Wisconsin 11, A&M 12, Notre Dame 13, Miami 14, Indiana 15, North Carolina 16, Texas Christian 17, 18 is Coastal, 19 is Arizona State, 20 is Louisiana, uh, shouts to y'all. Hope y'all all right. Same thing with LSU. Take care of yourself, please. Um, prayers for y'all. Really, can't I can't I can't stress it enough. Wouldn't. We're all with you. Number twenty one, Iowa. Number twenty two, Texas. Number twenty three, Washington. Number twenty four, Cincy. Number twenty five, Florida State. Glaring omission here is Florida. I just don't think they're that good. And I think the way that people talk about being inexperienced and young, they show what that's going to look like in the Cotton Bowl. And then they had the nerve to come out there and say they didn't really want to be there. Emory Jones has a lot to show me that he's the guy coming out of there, man. I just don't see it right now. I think Florida State retooled. I think 
Mackenzie Milton's going to be their guy. Getting Andrew Parchment from Kansas. That, like you, Jermaine Johnson coming from Georgia. They got dudes over there. People aren't paying attention. But that's okay. Florida State is going to prove me correct in this one. Uh, let me know what you think of the rankings, of course, in the comments below. But I wanted to get ahead of Ohio State, Minnesota because I am going to be traveling to that game in Minneapolis. It's going to be my first opportunity to see either one of those teams in person. Very excited about it. And hopefully we can talk about it after it's over. All right, that is it for me. Doses.